Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. Psych, we are not going up in a tree today because, well, Mitch doesn't want the liability for us going up in a tree today. Not today. Not today. Not today. Next, time. next time. We're going to do it next time. That'll be a fun episode. So, we're, where are we, Tom? We're in Byron. Somewhere in Byron. Byron Bears. <laughs> Byron we're Bears. In Byron. Byron. We're in beautiful Byron. Yes, and we a are. Day, and man. today our episode is about trees. We are going to talk about some really critical things that are going on with trees right now, especially in our region. We're going to talk ash, yep. right? So Mitch is going to dive in. This is Mitch Hoy, everybody, with ArborWise Minnesota. Arborwise, yep. He's um, he's a he's an arborist. There you go. There's the pickup. That's not a pickup. That's there's a truck. A and then there's here. a chipper. A we got some equipment here. We're going to be making some noise. And we are going to be, what are we doing to this tree? So unfortunately today we are removing this tree. Um, it's at a stage of the progression of infestation that the, the organism is basically tanked. Yeah, yeah. EAB. Some, EAB we've all seen this. We've Emerald seen Emerald ash borer. Yeah. So, but there's some interesting facets to this tree that we can talk about how the tree was affected by the beetle and seasonality of it, and maybe some things that we want to consider if we're thinking about saving our trees. Um, so just to uh, a brief overview, emerald ash borer is an invasive pest from Asia that was brought in on probably some pallet material. Um, it does not distinguish our ash trees as being healthy. It's uh, boring insects are like the wolves of tree ecology. They take out the stress and the weed from the gene pool. Um, and Asiatic ash trees actually have a higher tannic acid content cool. to their systems. Cool, didn't know that. Yeah. We're learning something new today. Woohoo! Yay, Mitch! <laughs> so when uh, EAB encounters our ash trees, it thinks they're all sick. Oh, okay. So that's, um, that's so they why go they, after it, yep. they proliferate and go after them. So not nondescript, just go after any ash tree there is. And any how many tree. have we lost so far now? Six million? Five million? Oh, man. Many, many millions. I mean, we're we're looking at losing a billion here in Minnesota. Alone. Oh, you're kidding me. They've really raised that. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And it is, it is a, almost a quarter of our urban tree canopy. Yeah. yeah. Because we, that yeah. was the choice tree of choice back in the 80s well because it was to replace As the elm tree the elm yeah, from dutch American elm disease elm, yep. but we finally have kind of a rule in place in the city of rochester now that you don't repeat a species or a right. genera yep. with every between every five so that's yep. helpful or yeah. even the same so, tree right, so not right. yeah we're yep. learning that to monoculture which is important yep, yep. but yeah 25 percent loss in terms of ecology you know that could tank an ecosystem Yep. Uh, for yep. such a, a keystone species. Um, as far as uh, actual native ecology goes, there's going to be effects that are unforeseen as of yet, mm -hmm. uh, because ash litter is one of the main forage of amphibian tadpoles. Oh, really? so oh my gosh! Are, Learn another thing: yeah. amphibian tadpoles. I used to collect tadpoles litter. as a kid. I, so did, I wanted to get I mud too. puppies. I, I, yeah. I yeah. brought a mud puppy home once, Aww. and mom did not like that. Oh, oh, mom. Yeah. What's mom's problem? Big one, yep. Mom, mom, the amphibians at home are good. You just got to Mom should be proud of Mitch, though. Look yeah. at this, running a yeah. business There's here. probably the manner in which I present it. Oh, yeah. That's critical. Not so are we going to walk around? And yeah. I do, I do want to talk about this tree. So okay. Okay. What's really interesting about this tree is it looked healthy last year. Yep. And we can tell that because there's actually still leaf buds on it. Yep. Okay. So when it when it absides its leaves, yep. um, it, it was pretty much fully foliated. Uh, and uh, so the important thing to consider from that is that most of the damage actually occurred through the dormant season. Okay. And that's when larvae are still very active for EAB. So a lot of damage can occur when it's not evident that it's it's ongoing and so ash can have a two-year cycle um, sometimes they're a one-year cycle sometimes they're a two-year cycle during the summer they've pupated and the adults are out um, colonizing and laying eggs near the end of the summer um, so the population that's still in the tree at the end of the year they can those larvae can be very big especially yeah. if they're they're okay. on a two-year cycle um, they can do an incredible amount of damage after the tree has defoliated for the season so we have actually learned that we don't want to necessarily 
uh, take a visual assessment as being an, an indicator of, of viability for treatment right. at the end of the growing season. Right. Okay. Uh, is this tree can, treated? You, is it ever treated? Do you know? Yeah. We it? were considering treating this okay. tree just because of the uh, the present buds. Yeah. We did not treat it once it didn't leaf okay. out. Okay. Um, so that's a key for people that are right. just thinking yeah. they can yeah. save yeah. their Don't, ash tree. Exactly. Right. Some people think, oh, it's still going to come back. And yeah. It, it's not. <laughs> this, is, this is stress growth here. This is the yeah. tree trying to recover, trying to survive as best it can. It's not going to make it. There's no way. No. Those limbs no will just way. dry out eventually, and yeah. there'll be a so you don't a danger, you don't right? inoculate, you don't water at this stage. You just yep. you need to remove it Correct. and replant. And replant. Replant. Is Replanting is huge. key. Huge, yep. huge, huge. Yeah, with the the loss of uh, so much urban canopy coverage, uh, you know, like our heat island effect is going to go up. Yep. Um, you know, a lot of people just don't understand that that trees aren't just uh, beneficial for shade. Trees are the basis for creating local climate. Yep. Yep. Plants act together to create climate. Yep. Um, yep. Microclimates that become macroclimates. If you look at a map of the distribution of human population over the earth, it is local to forest ecology mm -hmm. for that mm -hmm. reason. Yeah. Yes. We need trees because they make our lives livable. We can't live in deserts. Yep. Um, nope. I mean, we can try, but it's a lot of work. Sucks a lot of natural resources. We need to that try tree and do that. canopy. And look at uh, look at Lake there, Mead, right? right? And the For water sure. water reduction from hydroelectricity. Just the drawdown of people living in a desert, Las Vegas. It's it's huge. Yep. It's, it's consumptive water use. So yeah, absolutely. Yep. Desertification happens. Yep. Absolutely. Bad bad deal. So yep. this tree's going to be replaced. It is. Yes. Which is a good thing. What are we replacing it with? So we, we are. Cause because we want to help. Kelly we and I are going to help. Really. We're going to be here. We really no. won't be helping. We can give you guys a shovel if you want. I like to shovel. Yeah. We were shoveling earlier today, but whatever. <laughs> Anyways, we are replacing a it with a, a hybrid elm. Okay. Um, so that would be an elm with recombinant genetics to make it resistant to Is Dutch that elm disease. Right that is it right there. Oh my God. Nice. Look at that. Just on cue. Beautiful. Yeah. Da -da -da -da. Da -da -da. Nice. Bringing the elm. Okay. That's Wonderful. in our legacy tree format. Okay. Um, what's really neat about that system, I mean, a lot of things. Uh, it basically mimics how trees establish in nature. Uh, it has a much higher success rate um, for transplant. But we can actually put a new tree beneficially where an old tree was same day. Wow. Whereas, so the roots, you don't have to worry about the roots that are remaining in the ground. And, correct. Yeah. As those decompose, yeah. the new tree actually uses those. Uses it up. Oh, okay. Yep. That's good so, to know because yep. I yeah. remember trying to get every piece of root out. I couldn't when I... You don't have to with yeah. this kind of growth. So in nature, yeah. trees just kind of naturally spread their roots out. Yep. But when you're growing them in a container or even B&B &B stock that continually gets root Root, root prune, yep. you're you're cutting off the lifeblood to the canopy, right? Yep. So legacy trees growing out flat, Correct. you can don't have to dig as deep of a hole. The roots are already spread out like they need to be. You don't have any girdling or greatly minimizes yep. girdling from Shift. growing oh God, in a pot so continuously. Yeah, oh so it's the way to go. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm a yeah. guy and I got more girdling going Is on. Is U of M <laughs> doing any studies with legacy grown trees compared to a B&B? &B? I don't believe so like yet, that? no. Um, I mean, this was developed by Ron Zilmer over in Wisconsin. You know, he was an Okay, educator. so maybe UW is doing it. Okay. Um, it's, it's basically, you know, his life's work. Um, and uh, 30 years of work went into the system. And, wow. Uh, really, maybe you guys want to talk to Ron sometime. Okay. Um, he's just... We absolute, should. We're always looking for yeah. more shows. Yeah, because we sure. we planted one of your a couple of your legacy trees at Riverside Central Elementary yep. earlier yeah. this year. Yep. We planted two of the same species, one B and B stock, mm -hmm. the other legacy tree stock. Yeah. So we're going to monitor that over the because it's a DNR floodplain there. It's a yep. DNR zone, so we're going to monitor the growth habit and how much better one one is over the other. So for that's sure. that's yeah. so awesome to know though because. People put this tree here, that's where they wanted it. Yeah. And it's good to know from Mitch here that you can just put another Bam, tree right. right there. Yeah. So you don't have to reconsider your landscaping. And yeah. You can yeah. put a legacy tree here. Yeah. Yes. Now, other formats of containerization have uh, some stipulations. You do have to replace the aggregate yep. if you're going to go in right away. Yep. Um, yep. And that's going to be highly disturbed, whereas this is going to be a little less disturbed. Uh, and that's mostly because the, the deteriorating material 
actually leaches nitrogen yeah. in its deterioration yeah. process. Okay. Just like mulch. Yep. It's a high carbon, high carbon content material, yeah. so it needs nitrogen to decompose. Yeah, so if you put a containerized tree into that, it will actually leach from it. Okay. Yep. Because it's engulfed in it. Whereas the legacy tree system goes the whole system goes in and so it's over it. Okay, perfect. So, I'm gonna go let's uh let's check out the blue spruce okay and you guys can get started on flopping this tree <laughs> the whole crew is here oh my gosh tom usually does the costuming mitch and he had suggested that we wear hard hats today and i said <laughs> i said i don't think we need them but well we hopefully don't well, need them <laughs> we uh, we don't really have any operations happening yet right. yeah, but yeah if we were within a, a work zone when they were starting to work so yeah. this is your. So they just threw up a line classic there. Classic blue spruce that everybody was kind of bought advised the, bought to, the I bought swallowed them. the medicine, yeah. drank, drank the Kool-Aid. Kool yep. Yeah. So what about this, Mitch? What about so this blue, blue spruce? spruce and white spruce? Um, they're they're actually alpine species. Mm -hmm. You know, they come from regions that have more consistent moisture. Um, they get really stressed out in the moisture cycling we have in the Midwest here where we go into drought in the summertime, mm -hmm. which is exacerbating now Yeah, um, as we're heating up locally. So they really don't tolerate that well. And um, they are now, we're really dealing with three different fungal issues consistently. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. Yep. Fungal. I thought it was just get one for a while. <laughs> so now there's two more that have emerged. Yeah. <laughs> and one's, one's another needle cast that, that, um, works just like res resispera, okay. which is called Samina, but uh, the other is Cytospora canker. Okay. Um, and then there's just a multitude of uh, pests that are also wipe and mop too. So what's the signs for that? So you know you have a fungal infection here. So for the needle Maybe this doesn't look as bad as many, but... This isn't too bad. Yeah. I mean, it's got a lot of nice yeah. growth on it. Yeah, yeah. especially yeah. given the age. Yep. Yeah. So typically we start to see stress from these diseases and pests after the after the spruce trees go into sexual maturity. So yep. like after 12 to 16 years. And okay. theory is, is that they redirect a lot of their energy into reproduction at that okay. point, or at least what would be in their budget for those responses yep. necessary to fight off yep. these, these stressors. Anyways, with the needle cast, so that fungus, like most funguses, it doesn't like air circulation or UV light penetration. Mm -hmm. okay. So it's going to start out lower in the canopy and progress up and out over yep. time. Which is why you typically see blue spruce, once they get to be a certain age, 15 to 20 feet tall, the lower branches start to die off and you've got to cut them off. And they're meant to be a conically branched yeah. structure I, I don't like cutting those off all the way down to the off, ground then you got yeah the, then you got this chopped the... off look and you see yep. the sap Taking running out the yeah. biomechanics of yeah. The yeah exactly exactly yeah. Yeah. so i don't know why the nursery industry is still growing these things and selling them in our region they're, but it's, it's you're, they're slapping them in left and right yep the yeah. pines. I mean, people now are looking more at pines versus a spruce or something. Yep. Yeah. yeah. The the if you if you could stick with the white or red. Uh -huh. For sure. Yeah. For sure. The natives. Yeah. So yeah. anything else to tell us about blue spruce here happening? Well, we got so, another I mean, one here that's further further yeah. along. And it's been progress. trimmed a little bit as we just talked about, yeah. right? And they they still look good. Yeah. They you do. can start another tree they, growing next to it, and they just have to be put on life support if you want to keep. Yep. 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 If you know that it's a short timer, I have a very big one in my yard, which I think you've seen. I think it's yep. one of the bigger ones in town, actually. Yeah, for sure. And it's looking pretty good. Very yep. sparse, but yeah. All right. All right. So, and then we got another tree that we want to talk about back here, right? Here, here we've got another ash. Look at what's going on with this. You can oh, really yeah. oh, yeah. <laughs> this is, take a look at this. You guys yeah. are taking this one out, right? Yeah, this, let's is, just this is beautiful. Let's just, let's oh just my expose gosh. this. Look at that. That's from <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? This is from the, the insects channel. Yep. Oh, wow. So this is what happens. They just keep going right underneath this uh, this bark layer here. But you know what's really neat about this that. is we are getting, yeah. you can see some of the boreholes there. So it actually kind of cuts off the circulation of the tree by Correct. just yep. stripping all that uh, underneath the girdles. Of, yep. And once you girdle a tree, then it's it's going to die. Kind of so. over with. Kind of over with. Holy cow. But you know what's really cool is 
we got some really artistic people that are working on using this <laughs> wood, great. reclaimed, you know, EAB wood with the boreholes yeah. and stuff in it, making some really neat stuff out yeah. of it. I've always wanted to see this on like an iPhone case or something like that. Oh, yeah, yeah you've got to snap a picture with this <laughs> oh, one. Yeah. Look at this one. This channel is still filled with oh, a little bit of... Uh, yeah. Frass. Is that frass? Yeah. Frass. It doesn't look like what happens from a so that's from like, larvae uh, on a plant. The excrement. That's their... Okay. Yeah. That's after they get done chewing it. That's larva, <laughs> larva poo. Larva oh, poo. Oh, larva poo. Can we say that? <laughs> Life. Okay. Okay. Let's go take a let's look at the silver yeah. maple. Okay. So yeah, that one's. Hurt, but oh, we got a silver maple, and it still looks good. But oh yeah. But there's some issues that probably should have been addressed earlier, right, Mitch? Yeah. So this tree was very likely planted when this house was built. Um, silver maples were heavily planted because they grow very quickly and produce dense shade. Um, and uh, yeah, so people wanted to get the shade on there on their homes yep. pretty quickly good camera person yeah there we I'm go i'm taking over <laughs> i'm taking over so anyways there we um go. we we kind of seem to have a, a cultural attitude of, of uh liking to plant trees and then not dealing with them until they become a problem mm -hmm. and that creates issues that just result in tree removal later so this tree was never pruned as a juvenile and it produced these ingrown unions here so these are just uh, kind of waiting for a windstorm to, to just come right off, to split yeah, them right snap off. right off. Just yep. Step off, and they probably thought, "Oh, great! I got three leaves going off. I got a lot more shade." But yep. at some point, you got to make sure it's got the right shape. And the way this cycles and kind of creates an inhibitory loop is these codominant stems. They they compete with each other. They want to lean out. Yep. They lean close to structures. We successively prune them out. We push all the growth sites to the ends of the levers, and we put an, an incredible amount of leverage on these weak unions. We basically, through first lack of pruning and then over pruning, yep. create failures. Yeah, yeah. So most of, you know, these cuts should have been made when those limbs were the size of my thumb. Yeah, 40 years ago. Oh, yeah. Well, tw not, 25 years ago, maybe. Probably 20. Pretty Maybe right. the second, third, third well, year. with as low as they are at at planting time, at, yeah. at transplanting time, probably, okay. yeah. So I yeah. I like to trim mine, Mitch, but at a certain point I couldn't reach it anymore. Right. So so the, can you do just the pruning in the first five ten years that you can reach it, and then it's okay, or a lot? Or do you have to come back. So ninety percent of the pruning of a tree in its lifetime should be done within probably the first twenty years, depending okay. on the, the species. Okay. You know, uh, some. Okay, now we're back. Okay, we're, we're back. <laughs> we're back in, and we're in Byron. So we're still we're in Byron. We're still in Byron. <laughs> okay. We, lo yeah, we, we lost a little bit of the Wi-Fi, folks. <laughs> or not the Wi-Fi, just connection. Wrap up on we're the still in the maple. silver yeah. maple. Yeah, yeah. Um, anyways, uh, absolutely you can and you should, if you are if you become informed, prune your own trees. Um, and trees He are, has become informed. Yes. Become <laughs> yes. informed to prune your trees. There's a way to prune them. Yes. I really encourage people to, uh, you know, I feel like the, maintaining your trees is a way to connect with them too. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which for me is, uh, you know, there's mental health benefits to engaging with trees. Yeah. Biophilia. Yes. Last yes. child left yeah. in the woods. But the ultimate is the bonsai trees that we saw. Oh my gosh, the they're bonsai. incredible. Talk about talk about, getting attached talk to Talk about tree. manipulation <laughs> yeah, of a right? living yeah. organism. Yeah. Holy yeah. cow. Like a tree. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, Anyways, yeah, I mean, at a certain point, though, you do want to engage a professional, and you yep. especially want somebody that understands trees' life cycles, the particular species and where they're at in their life cycle. There's many different strategies to pruning, um, and especially, you know, once you're working at height, you, yep. want, you want to yep. engage a professional. So find yep. an arborist. L licensed arborist, licensed is, arborist is, is, is my first recommendation yeah. always arborist. for trees. Yep. Because yes. we're dealing with trees, it's a little bit, I mean, we, we do a lot with gardening, you know, vegetables and yep. pollinator yep. plants and things like that, lawns, but trees are a big deal. And it's they, a big they ticket are. item. They are. Yeah. They are. So explain how important trees are. You got a, oh my gosh, we got a worker here. We got a worker bee. We got a worker that needs <laughs> Mitch. I'm oh, just curious if we can start making some noise. Oh yeah. Sure, Who are I, you? I am Corey Schulte. Hey, Corey. Nice. You've got some equipment on. <laughs> All right. Yes, We're going to make noise. Corey's also a certified arborist. All right. Awesome. Awesome. Five years of experience in the industry. Yeah. And 
we nice can make job. some noise. Oh, look, and then we got some equipment there. Oh, my gosh. Ho hopefully, we're going to see this tree flop on should the we, ground. Should That'd we stay cool. on and maybe do a little maybe, noise? Maybe. Maybe. We'll see. So, okay. Well, I've got a little bit of prep work to do on yep. the front tree, get the notch put in, uh, the board cut, and uh, come through with some sprouts, and we'll be ready to come down. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. We'll be okay. right around. All right. Thanks, Thank Corey. You. You know, it could be a bonus episode. A bonus episode? We, we, just, like, we like. I think we people did, are getting tired of bonus episodes. We did two bonus episodes with the honey. I don't know if you watched our episode on Oh. Mitch does not spend time. I know. He does not waste it's, his time. It's on watching social media, but we can send show. you. <laughs> I watched the show. For you watch? You're awesome. Good yeah. for you. He cool. I'll, I'll just show. have to catch up on him in this winter. So. Yeah. yeah <laughs> oh my yeah. gosh. We're all. Do That's you what get, we do. Do you get tapped out? I was texting Tom this morning at like 5 30 because we had to get up to be at Oxbow at 7. And I said, you know, what is it? You get to winter, and then the springtime comes, and you're like, yeah, let's get going. This is right. awesome. You dive in, you go full bore. And all of a sudden, it like gets to the end of September, and it's like, I don't even care if I get more cucumbers out of this plant. Just rip right. it out. I'm done. I can't keep up with my emails. I wake up this time of year, and it's like Groundhog's Day. Yeah. yeah. Like stuck in a loop. Yeah. A you're, oh, yeah. yeah it's stuck like, yeah. in a loop. Yeah, and then I wasn't going to say, reminder that I snowbird. So, yeah, my whole life changes then. So. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, are we ready to... Are we, are, are we, talk, we talked we talk silver maple like yep. you wanted. We talked blue spruce, spruce like you wanted. Yep. We talked ash. We showed them actually the damage, which was yeah, pretty awesome. Yeah, that was cool. We got to get, cool. get a good photo of that. Yeah. Yeah. And now here comes the noise. Here comes the noise. Here comes the All noise. Right. So we're going to do a video when they get ready to flop that tree, and we'll post it below. But otherwise, thank you to Mitch Hoy of Arborwise, Minnesota. And uh, what are we going to say? What are we going to say? Rock, Rock your, your day. Bye-bye.